All right, let's do a crash course, a Stats 101 for med students. In any study, you'll always see that um, descriptive statistics get reported. And you might wonder, what are descriptive statistics? So primarily, it's a summary and the spread. So for summary, if it's a continuous variable like age or blood pressure, you summarize that by calculating a mean or median. And if it's a categorical variable like sex, history of disease, that gets summarized by percentages, percentage of people who are men, percentage of people with diabetes, etc. And um, here's an example of mean. So this is from a great website and it walks through these tiny giraffes. And here you can see the average height of each of the individual giraffes and you can calculate a mean. You can pause here and look at the bottom for the formula for how you calculate a mean. And it's 106 millimeters. You can also calculate a median. Again, pause the screen if you want to see how that differs between the two, but if you um, uh, do so, you'll find the median is 117 millimeters. So in addition to the summary, we, we might want to know, okay, but how much variability, how much spread were there in those averages? So um, the most simple example of spread is report the range smallest to largest number. So here, for example, you would see the smallest giraffe is 55 millimeters. The tallest giraffe is 147 millimeters. So the range is 55 to 147. Um, there's other ways you can report the spread. Uh, standard deviation. This is a single number, a number that summarizes the spread. And most often it's reported with a mean, for example. So what's the formula? Well, you can um, calculate the deviation based on how much each individual giraffe's height differs from this mean of 106 millimeters. You can subtract them all from the mean and do some fancy math and you get the standard deviation. And here it is, 16 millimeters. Uh, in addition to standard deviation, you can also report another type of range. Rather than the whole range, you can report the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile, and that's known as the interquartile range. And most often that's reported um, when you're discussing the median of a sample. Uh, so you can pause the slide here to see how, how to calculate it. Um, and then you'll find that the interquartile range is 82 millimeters uh, to 129 millimeters. And a fun fact, the median is also known as the 50th percentile. Uh, next up, 95% confidence intervals. These are more complicated than it sounds. Um, just take my word for it. But if you wanted to calculate it yourself, you could toss all of these individual numbers into ChatGPT and ask it to provide you with the 95% confidence interval. And there's the result at the top. And then you might want to go further than that. You know, how do I compare two groups? That's just telling me the overall summary in the spread. Well, if you want to compare two categorical variables, most often you would uh, conduct a chi-square test and that would give you a p-value. If the variables you want to compare are continuous, then a student's t-test and again that gives you a p-value. How do you actually calculate these? There's online calculators, but also you can use programming languages like R, Stata, etc. So here's just an example um, in this made up table one. Uh, you can pause here, but what you'll see is that if it's categorical, you use a chi-square test. If it's continuous, you report a t-test. Um, this isn't rocket science. Uh, and then uh, we can go a little bit further than that. If your study is a very, very large sample size, instead you want to report standardized differences. And again, um, there's online formulas that you can use for that. There's no magical number for oh, how big is really big. I don't know, more than 5,000 people, more than 10,000 people. And if in your study you have two continuous variables, then you would want to calculate a correlation coefficient. An example of two uh, continuous variables would be something like you know, the temperature in degrees Celsius and how many ice cream cones get sold. And the correlation coefficient would tell you that as the temperature goes up, ice cream sales also go up. Um, next steps. So again, you might want to go beyond rather than just comparing baseline characteristics to something much more. You know, how did the outcome of interest in your study differ between the two groups? Maybe the outcome was death. Maybe the outcome was number of cars sold. Uh, who knows? So a really good pearl is that if your outcome was rare, like less than 0.1%, usually all you want to do is report descriptive statistics and avoid any fancy modeling because you just have no statistical power to do so.
But let's say we have a made up example of 10,000 patients. And in that example, 10% achieved weight loss if they got Ozempic and 1% achieved weight loss if they had diet and exercise. So when you wanna decide, okay, how do I compare the outcome um, between these two groups? Is your outcome categorical or continuous? And based on that, this will help you to identify which type of regression you want to perform. It's too much information for this talk, but you can pause here and see, for example, that if your outcome is categorical, you'd probably want logistic regression. What on earth is regression? Again, TMI for this talk. In brief, it's a mathematical way to estimate how the variable of interest, in this case, Ozempic, is associated with the outcome, weight loss, after adjusting for other factors. But like I said, TMI, and we'll have a whole other talk just dedicated to regression. So a uh, quick example, if for example, the outcome here is number of pounds lost, well, that's a continuous variable. So we would probably want to perform linear regression. You can also analyze weight as a categorical outcome. Say, okay, uh, what percentage of the people lost at least 10% of their body weight? Okay, this is now yes, no variable. It's a categorical variable. And in that case, there's a decent chance that logistic regression is the um, type you'd want to pursue. And then there's also ways to get a good sense of what stats you'll be reporting or what stats to expect just based on the study design. We're almost at seven minutes, but if you're reporting a case series, then descriptive statistics, that's it. In a cross-sectional study, descriptive statistics and maybe an odds ratio. A case control study, all you're gonna get is an odds ratio. A cohort study, there it is. In a randomized trial, there it is. If you're not sure about case control versus a cohort, um, we'll uh, include a link to the video explaining what the two of those are. I uh, hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.